I'm Sophie Gibson-Rush, here to share with you what's current or quality in local music this week. Once upon a time, when I was on tour with a band, we stopped in Olympia to play a show at a place called Obsidian. It was a cool coffee shop bar place with a respectably sized venue in the back and a very, very talented sound guy. It was one of the best shows we played and no one came except for the sound guy. You'd be hard pressed to find a musician who hasn't played a show for an audience of zero. Musicians are used to playing shows for a handful of people or a bar full of people who would rather you weren't there. While shows like this can be both fun and good practice, I'd venture that most musicians would choose the opposite. There are tons of options for entertainment today. Going to a show is often one of the least exciting of those options. Who wants to go see the local band play at Congress when they can go see the latest turd from Michael Bay in 3D? They can just listen to the band's first single for free on SoundCloud when they get home. The local music market is also flooded with new bands popping up like Whack-A-Mole and four-hour quadra-build shows. The abundance of choice tends to wash out individuality, and bands need to work twice as hard to, dis to distinguish themselves in order to gain audience members. Similarly, there's so much noise on social media that bands are getting fewer and fewer new fans through that forum. But in order to make it, or whatever we're calling it these days, bands need to consistently draw well. When you draw well or sell out, then you move on to bigger and better venues. When you get this kind of exposure, then you get the attention of musical fairy godmothers like agents or management companies and record labels. And then you get to party with the Hadids. So how do you do it? How does a band cut through the noise? How does a band move beyond an audience of its friends and moms to a genuinely attentive and loyal fan base? I've compiled some ideas from the breeding grounds of the internet and some late night conversations I've had. So here they are. First, support your scene. Go to shows, learn about everyone and everything that's out there. Become known as a loyal concert goer and the favor will likely be returned. It's a tit for tat kind of friendship, but it's a friendship all the same. I also have a less jaded point here. If you're passionate about music, that rubs off on even the most cynical of musicians. A truly excited and inspired concert goer is hard to miss. Second, establish your identity and then make as many people see it as possible. Make a logo. Logos can be cool, I promise. Put your logo on everything you do. Insist that it's displayed on the venue's website. Yes, I think you need to put up posters. Remember what I said about social media not connecting to fans anymore? We're backsliding here. If people see your logo in enough coffee shops, they'll eventually, they're eventually going to check you out online, especially if it's an evocative or creatively imagined logo. Use the power of the internet. When people eventually do check out your music, make sure it's easily available to them. Make a good website, Facebook, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, or all of the above. Make sure you proudly display your upcoming show dates. Make sure your music is right there, ready to listen to. And please make it pretty. Play a lot, but not too much, and spread it out. This one is tough. There are very few venues in Tucson, it's true, but I bet there are a lot more than you think. One way to gain a larger audience is to play in places and for demographics you wouldn't normally hang out with. What are the foothills up to these days? Mount Lemon? Midtown? Your most loyal supporters might come from a place you've never considered playing at. Spreading it out also solves the issue of playing too much in a small area, like downtown Tucson, which fatigues audiences. Reach out politely to local radio publications and blogs. Be nice. If you have a contact, use them, but offer them true friendship and maybe a perk to sweeten the deal. Be a gentleman about it and buy the lady a drink. Having good publicity skills is imperative. A little bit of enthusiasm and humility goes a long way. Oh, and did I say support your scene? Well, I'll say it again. Get your butt to one show once a week and we'll go from there. I feel like all of this comes to one main point and it's this. Forget about being cool. Be passionate instead. Humans sense sincerity like a shark smells blood, and damn, we love it. This week, the Tucson Jazz Festival is starting and going through the end of January. 
check out their website for the full event listing. On Friday at 1 p.m., cellist Matt Heimovitz will set up his movable feast in the lobby of Hotel Congress. On Friday evening, local saxophone virtuoso Alex Weitz will release his album at Club Congress. That's at 10 p.m. And Monday is the all-day downtown jazz fiesta. Tomorrow, Al Fowl, Naima Moore, and Eric Eulogy bring their singer-songwriter groove to Al's club. Also tomorrow at 6, the Wanda Junes are playing at Metal Arts Village. Great band and super cool venue that's worth checking out. Tucson Fringe Festival promises low-cost performance opportunities to any act who wants it. Anyone can perform if they sign up before the deadline, which this year was on September 1st. So sorry, try again next year. The acts will be spread out between Flycatcher and Congress. With no official curation, this sounds like the best kind of pandemonium. That's on the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Also on the 13th is a dual album release with the Desert Beats, Lydian Osman, Golden Boots at Flycatcher. Lydian Osman and Golden Boots are Tucson classics, and this show is a great place to start practicing what I've been preaching. I'll be there on Friday evening. All right. Ciao for now, Tucson. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Stay lively and friendly for me.